So very quickly, how to do a full sterile central line. Um, the setup you're going to see right now is what we have to work with. We are actively pursuing getting a much better bundle that's going to have everything in one place and not involve the rigmarole you're going to see here. But the first thing is you want your patient in Trendelenburg if you're going to be doing a line in the neck um, because that's going to keep an air embolism from happening. So let's put the patient in Trendelenburg. If you're going on the right side of the patient, the ultrasound machine gets positioned on the left and vice versa. It's always opposite your sight because that way your line of sight can encompass both the spot you're sticking as well as the ultrasound screen. There should be a table positioned at your dominant hand so you could actually reach for this stuff without doing ridiculous stupidity like this. Um, before you start the procedure, you should ultrasound your sight and make sure that the one, the vessel's patent, but uh, just as importantly, that the depth and gain settings are what you want to actually do the line, because once you get sterile, that's not going to be possible for you to do on your own. And the goal here is that you should be self-sufficient on lines. Put a big blob of gel over the probe at that point. All right, let's discuss the things you need to have available as you're getting prepared to do it. You need a huge drape. What we're working with now is PDH black rotting drapes. They're present in every room. You need your bundle. You need whatever central line you're placing. If you're gonna be using ultrasound, you need an ultrasound pro cover. It's nice to have these flushes, though not essential. You can grab those later, but I have three flushes here. And whatever sterile gloves you are going to wear. So what I like to do is first open up this bundle and you've already noticed I'm sure but this bundle is horrible uh, ill conceived and predisposes you to making the line non-sterile um, but we have to work with what we got so let's open up this bad boy and I'm going to reach on put on my mask Put on my hat. All right, now here's where the first thing that, you know, is really a no-no for essential line prep occurs, but we're gonna, again, we have to work with what we got, is I have to reach into the kit and grab this prep without touching anything else. So I'm gonna do that. And everyone in the room at this point should have a mask on if they're anywhere near the patient. We're gonna prep. So we're going to prep wide, we're going to go over our site, but we're also going to go well into the lower part of the, uh, the neck as well as over the clavicle, uh, so that if we had to do a subclavian, we would. We're going to be going for right IJ, but we're prepping in the subclavian. We prep all the way down to the bed on the neck. We prep towards the contralateral side. And basically, the more prepping you do, the better. This stuff's cheap, but central line infections are expensive. That whole thing about circular, that's all crap, you don't have to worry about that, uh, but you do need to allow this to dry because they don't actually uh, get the spot sterile when wet. Okay, so while that's drying now, you're going to get the rest of your stuff prepped. And so what I like to do is use the lap drape packaging as my actual sterile site. Here's my drape, and now I'm going to open on my pro cover. And my central line. Okay, now I'm ready to get sterile. All right, open your gloves somewhere flat where you're not going to have them fall onto the floor. And now at this point you've got to grab your gown, but they can inexplicably tuck in all sorts of crap into the fold of the gown um, for no good reason that I could see. And as a result, your likelihood of touching any of those is actually kind of high. And 
so you wind up doing ridiculous stuff like this. And, you know, whatever you could do to get that crap out of there, you're allowed to touch the outside of your gown. You just can't touch anything that you actually want to have sterile. That was actually stuck to the gown, and now it's stuck to this um, because they are foolish. But like I said, we're fixing this. Okay, now your gown, like I said, you can touch anything on the outside. That's all fine. You can't touch anything on the inside. There's two little flaps here that allow you to actually put your hands in and drop the gown. And the non-sterile portion will be facing you at that point. Grab the Velcro and put it behind your neck. And I should say that I, you previously washed your hands before starting any of this, as you guys all know. Okay, so your hands go into the sleeve, but they don't pop out. And now you can put on your gloves without your hands ever emerging until they're actually inside your gloves. Okay, now we're gonna drape our patient. The way this lap drape works, is your angle good, Ed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is, it says head with an arrow. That goes towards the patient's head with the arrow facing the top of their head. Rip off all four of these adhesive strips. And now the middle of this is going to go over your, your actual site. And what you're going to find is that there's a big opening. We're going to fix that in a second. And these arrows tell you which way to pull. And then you can uncover your site. Now you can see, we got a wide open space and there's actually, like you can see a little bit of the sheet peeking down because this opens so far down. That's okay, because our next step is to take one of the fenestrated drapes. I prefer the one in the central line kit. And actually just leave your site exposed. And now you have a full sterile field. Now, the actual prep of the line kit itself should be as minimal as possible to get the job done so that you can do it the same way each time, regardless of whether it's a line that has to be placed emergently or non-emergently. So here's the things you need to do. You need to take off the cap on the brown port, which is the distal port in this particular set. That's one action. You need to grab your needle, take off the cover, and make sure the plunger moves easily and that it's actually on well. That's action number two. And then you need to take out your wire, take off the cover, regress the J-tip, and have it in a place where you could grab it instantly after getting your flash. That's the only three steps you need to prepare for a emergent line or a line on a patient who you don't have time for anesthesia. Notice, I didn't flush the line, I didn't screw with the other two ports, that's it. That's all I'm doing on the line. The only fourth step that gets added on a patient who you have a little bit of time and you want to be kind is to draw up your local anesthesia. And that's it. Nothing else should be done on this kit. No pre-flushing, no messing with the other ports. You're ready now. Everything else is a extra step that wastes time and doesn't have any advantage. The last thing you need to do is actually get your transducer cover. It has two sides. There's a side with a little opening and a side with a little tail. You take two fingers on one side of the tail so that it actually is inside now the cuff and you put your thumb on the other side of the tail inside of the cuff. And this lets you make a little mouth. That allows you, and I grab my sleeve at this point to make sure that it's not overhanging, allows me to reach down, my hand is totally covered by the sheath itself, pull up the probe, 
grab the cuff with my finger and pull all the way down. And make sure there's no air bubbles and rubber band that bad boy. Put on some lube and now you're ready to do the line. We're not gonna talk about doing the line at this point. We're gonna move on to the line is already in. And we've already flushed all the ports or we're gonna save the flushing until after we get all these drapes off. Either way is okay. And the, most of our lines here are 15 centimeters, so they're gonna be all the way in the skin. And there won't be anything emerging except for these little ears, which are gonna get sewn in. Then, you're gonna reach into the place that your gown came from, and in there should be a bio patch. It says which side should face up. The blue faces the blue sky. In an ideal world, one of these limbs of the bio patch actually will slip under the line, like that. That's difficult to do because the time you want to place the bio patch is actually after you've stitched in the line and then taken a four by four taken up all the blood, and then taken the last Cora prep that comes in these kits, because there's one in the central line kit and one in the um, bundle, and you should actually go around the line site and re-sterilize it and get rid of any of the blood, and only at that point should the bio patch go on. The problem with that is that your line is already sutured in, so now you can't easily pop this under. We're going to have a hemostat in the new setup that will allow you to reach the hemostat under and pull it through. Until then, just lay it on however you can. If you can slip it under there, great. If you can't, you can't. At this point, I like to hold the line and the bio patch, move this drape, and that gives me a little bit more space to actually apply my tegaderm. If the peds drape is still in the way, you might have to take that off, but I prefer to have this line closed off before I de-drape. So do what you can to get your tegaderm on before you de-drape, and that's gonna keep you from ripping your line out. And at that point, you peel off side stuff here, and you can mark this in the computer as a full sterile line. That's it.